what in the hell is he doing? He's sitting there going, turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right. Hello, and welcome to an episode of American Truck Simulator. In today's episode, I am in Eureka currently, and I'm gonna go pick up a trailer. This trailer is a special sort of delivery load. It's uh, huge tires, which don't weigh all that much, 44,000 pounds. Oh, no, okay, I put it in the first gear when I meant to put it in the fifth. And my wheel's acting up, so one moment. There, okay. So I had to uh, enable force speed, but I can disable it. It's a little glitch I get whenever I go and play Forza and then get into this game. So, it's been a long time since I've done one of these episodes, mainly because I haven't had a shifter to use. Okay. The retarder was still on. Mm, okay, now the retarder's off anyway. So I'm going to go pick up this trailer. This is like a special, like, heavy delivery or whatever it's called, so I'm going to should be escorted. Which I suspect is going to be very useful, because I'm going to be on the really, really curvy road, which is going to be pretty annoying, but pretty fun, I think. Let's slow down here. I noticed that even though I haven't played this game in a while, I'm still able to shift pretty decently, like right there. Okay, that was a grind. Okay, pull in here, and get the trailer. Okay, mark it, and this one right here. oversized load yeah definitely okay so here it is this is just all the stuff you need to do anyway let's start so I believe right over there yep there's my escort vehicle it's a Crown Vic actually it's cool let's take off here on a pretty big trailer but then again the road that I'm going to be driving on is going to be horrible so who knows my goal here is to not wreck into anyone but really this does I feel like the reason why you have escort vehicles with this one is just because of... Okay. Clicked the wrong button there, so I grinded that gear out like crazy. Probably not the best for the transmission. Actually, earlier when I was playing the game, I was just driving along on the highway, and then I was in 8 high, and then the gear just went, nah, I'm not going to be in 8 high anymore. So I lost 8 high, but then I fixed it. So, in this episode, I shouldn't have any issues with that. And also, uh, I just got out of school. It's the uh, summertime. I mean, it doesn't feel like summer, actually, though. It really doesn't feel like summer, which is something I don't like. It's just like I felt like I could just go to school today and it would feel completely normal. Okay, that was horrible. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. We, I don't have to pay attention to the stop lights. That's good. Good shift there. Also, now that school's out, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to make videos because I don't have to deal with school most well, the whole week and then come on the weekend and then do some videos. I can just do them throughout the week easier. Also, so I just watched a video and apparently, this was some time back, I believe. Anyway, they're in Australia. They had issues with uh, Ford, uh, Ford's catching on fire. Which I like Ford's, but, you know, every company has their issues. You know, if you think about it, so, you know, Toyota and Honda are known for making really reliable cars. When was the last time they made something that was, like, known as a pile of garbage? I think the only thing I can think of, for Toyota at least, was, like, the most recent Celica they made. Because that had, like, a Yamaha-built engine. Which was not very good. They, those engines, ugh, horrible. So now we're getting closer to the horrible road here. Honestly, and like on the Honda side of the side of things, I think the Hondas really they are the engines are really tough. They're built, but the transmissions not so much. Like in the Honda Odysseys, I would never buy a Honda Odyssey because the transmission would go out in it a lot. So really, Honda was kind of is kind of more of a sporty, a little bit more interesting car brand than Toyota is. However, you get a little bit less reliability. 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 Okay, now we're slowing down a lot. I ain't slowing down that much to copy. So I'm going to put it down in the sixth gear. This episode should be pretty short, even though I am... Because even though this is going to be a pretty long section for the amount of miles it is, it's only 100 miles. In-game miles, so divide that by 20 and you got like 5 real-life miles. Okay, this is where things get interesting. I'm going to shift up so I can slow down and better if I need to, and speed up. I'm going to have to be continuously checking my mirrors here. 
And also talking about, like, the Ford thing where they started ca catching on fire. Anyway, so there was this guy. He, like, uh, got, um, I, I think he, like, ran off the road or something uh, near my house. This was a long time ago. Anyway, he ran, like, off the road and he ended up in the ditch. And so he eventually, like, was pulled out, whatever. And then I noticed that there were sparks coming from the bottom of the car. And I'm like, that can't be good. She goes inside the house. Then I walk out again. And the car is on fire. And honestly, it was on fire forever. And there was traffic way up my road. I don't really know what car it was, but it was on fire. So, mm. honk honk. Some guy just honked. Wow, that is a lot of traffic. <laughs> Just because of me. You know, I like American Truck Simulator. It's been so long since I've played it, but I really like it. I'm glad to get back into the game. Because, honestly, I think it's just relaxing to just drive a truck casually on the road. Well, I mean, it is casually until someone decides, you know what, I'm just going to pull right out in front of you and completely make you wreck into me because I know you can't stop as fast as a car. Also, I know that over in Europe where they have, talking about, like, transmissions and stuff, over in Europe, the trucks, most of them are automatic. But the automatics are like a weird sort of automatic. And many trucks over here now in America are also an automatic sort of transmission. However, they're a manual that is automatically controlled. So really, any idiot can just get into it and drive it. But just to wait until that thing breaks is going to cost like them so expensive to fix that. And then think of. Um, I know this is not even on the same basis, but, like, the older, forget which BMW it is, like, to the 2009-ish, that year BMW, god, I can't think of which one it is, I'll put it on the screen, uh, for the enthusiast one, I really like that, it's, like, one of my favorite cars of all time, because it was the last M5 to have a naturally aspirated V10 engine, after that, they started to go into V8s with turbochargers and all. That's just not good. I want all the cylinders possible. And yes, I know I'm American. Anything more than eight cylinders is communist. But you put turbos on an engine, and that just means it needs more cylinders. Also, I only recently found this out. So you know how the BMW, uh, the not BMWs, the Bentleys, they have the W engines, like uh, the W12 engine. Just for example, there's actually two VR6 engines just put together. If you don't know what a VR6 engine is, the V stands for like a V6, but the R stands for in line. So it's a V6 that's in line. It's really good because it makes it really small and compact. It's the same length of the, as a three cylinder engine. And it's a little bit wider than a normal in line engine, but they're really simple engines to work on. So imagine two of those put together, and that will create a W engine. That's how they make those. And the VR6 engines, they, they've been around forever. And I know that in like the older Golfs, you can actually swap them and put in a VR6 into them. Give you want a, a different engine, obviously. So, so far, this trailer really hasn't been a big issue. Then again, there hasn't been much traffic on the road. Okay, I'm going to watch my mirror here because I don't want to crash into that little wall there. Thankfully, they stopped the traffic here. That's good. Ford F-150 there. I think that it was a 2015 model I just saw there, the red one. I didn't like that color. So there shouldn't really be too much of this left. Yeah, I know, it is pissing down rain, which doesn't help my visibility out of my mirrors. In my right mirror, I can barely tell where the crap my trailer is. Slow ahead. 25. Uh, oh yeah, look at the GPS. This is gonna be horrid. In malfunction. I just fixed my engine literally Yesterday when I was driving my truck, I was fixing- I fixed my engine, so now it's just gonna be broken again. Okay. Okay, watch out there. Take that really wide. And then here. No traffic, so I don't really have to worry about taking that too wide. Okay, that's good. Back up to 40. Well, the normal truck here would be at, like, 55. But, you know, whatever. Because I'm hauling this sort of trailer with the Escort, yeah, my maximum speed is 40. My retarded there, so down. Also, with that BMW I was talking about um, just a little bit ago, in in those the transmission is an out transmission that's just automatically controlled, which means it has a clutch and you got to replace the clutch every once in a while. Okay. Honestly, I would re just rather have a clutch pedal and a stick on the floor. 
That's why I want to change gears. I don't like dual clutch transmissions because they're really, in general, more unreliable than a manual. And also, I know that they can shift faster, but there's just something about a manual that's better than a dual clutch. I think for me, it's just a feeling of going through gears and rowing them myself. You can row your own gears, and you don't have to just press on some paddles like I used with my blinkers on the gun. I just used my paddle shifters. I know for a while when I didn't have my shifter, I used my paddle shifters to shift around in BMG Drive. In BMG, I would just click the right paddle and it went into drive, and really I just like shifting my own gears. Why I use the I, that's why I use the manual transmission in uh, America Truck Simulator. Okay, gonna go slow here. Take it wide. Don't run into the barrier. That looks good. Looks like the rain might be dying down a little bit. That would be good. Oh, look there. Purple truck. Okay, the cop just slammed his brakes there. Okay, turn off to the right. And then, since I'm entering Reading, I don't have that much further to go. Oh, jeez. Uh, don't crash into anything. Good. Looking at my little blind spot mirror there. Okay. Yep, I can see the delivery point popping in the view on the GPS there. Also, I'm curious. I was driving a little bit yesterday, but right now I have 22,000 miles on the truck. So just divide that by 20 and it'll give you how many actual miles I have on the truck, which won't be much. But it's a video game. You're not going to sit down in a video game for five hours and drive. Well, unless you're going to sit down in a video game for five hours and drive. I wonder what the, what's the most miles someone has actually driven in an American Truck sim Simulator. That was horrible. I basically just spit all over my mic. <laughs> yeah, but like, hmm. I wonder what is the most miles someone has put on a truck in an American Truck Simulator. Or the most that they've driven in total. I think I've driven somewhere close to maybe 150,000 miles in-game. What is that cop doing? What in the hell is he doing? He's sitting there going, turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right. Okay, now he's not doing it. That was so weird. Okay, the game has been out forever, but it is... Oh, I should have I should have took that a lot wider. Ah. Okay, good. So I'm going to get up over here. Right up here, not to the left right here, but up here. Okay. Retarder activated. Ah. I ain't gonna slow down that much, bud. Okay, so. Time to park her up right here. Just line this up perfectly here, because you know how I am with my OCD. That should be pretty good lined up. Bring it a little bit to this side, and uh, that's good. So, hopefully you liked this episode, and goodbye.